Hey guys, welcome to another Monday Critique. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. For me, I am having a great Monday because this is my second take doing this entire video once again. I didn't realize I had an 8 gig card in the camera. And given that I record this all by myself, I didn't realize that the camera stopped recording and I was keep talking and talking. I had some good stuff too. They're probably all gone. But let's see, we're gonna get into it and do this Monday critique. We have an image submission here by Ivan. So Ivan, I hope that you get a lot of wonderful information from what I'm about to tell you. Cause I already said it, I know what I said. <laughs> And we're gonna do it again. <laughs> if you guys want to submit your image to be critiqued, please join our Facebook group. It's called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. In that group, I created a specific thread where you could submit your images to be critiqued. Let's jump straight into this image critique. So let's start with the first thing that I always start out with, and that is lighting. Lighting is very important, so I always start out with that subject matter first. So when I look at the image, I always try to find the main light in every image. And the main light in this image appears to be coming from camera right. The way I can tell that the main light is coming from camera right is if you look at the subject's face, you will notice that there's a shadow that's being cast on her face by her hair. And that's how you can tell that that's where the light is coming from. Speaking of light, my light just died on me, so I had to stop the video and start it again. So let's continue with this light. So another thing that I noticed with this image with respect to light is the background. If you look at the background, you will notice that the background have this overexposed area. Now the creator of this image is using an artificial light to light the subject. Now when you work with artificial light, you basically work with two exposures. The first exposure being the background. So you would use your camera to expose for the background so that the background could be properly exposed. The next thing you do is with the artificial light, you use the artificial light to properly expose your subject. Now, when you do that, now you have a properly balanced image with respect to the exposure. In this particular case, the exposure is not properly balanced because you have an arguably properly exposed subject, but then you have an overexposed background. So unless you were trying to go for that type of look, then you got it. But if that's not what you were trying to go for, my suggestion would be expose for the background first, then use your artificial light to bring up the exposure on the subject. And then that way you have a properly exposed image. So another issue that I see with respect to the lighting is if you look at the subject's face, you would notice that the light quality on her face is not that great. If you look at the light exposure on her chest, you will see that the light quality on our chest is a little bit better than the light quality that, that it is on our face. And the reason for that is because her chest is facing the light and her face is not. Her face is looking towards the camera and her chest is facing towards the light. So the light quality on the, on the chest versus her face is a little bit different for that reason. Now, because her chest is facing the light, you kind of lose some of the depth and dimension that you would want to have in the bust area. So my suggestion would be if you want that depth and dimension in the bust area, which most females would want to enhance that area, is to turn the bust away from the light and that will increase the, the texture, the, the depth and dimension in that area. So that would be my suggestion if you're trying to go for that look. That's what I would suggest that you do there. And with respect to the light quality on the face, the easiest way to fix that is to simply bring the chin up just a little bit and turn it towards the light just a little bit and eyes back to the camera and light quality issues on the face, fix. So another thing that you could have done if you'd wanted to leave her face exactly where it is, 
and not bring the chin up or move it over to the right is you could have just simply moved the light a little bit more towards the camera. So in that way it's facing the subject's face and it could hit her face a little bit more and give you a better light quality on her face. So let's talk about the light source. The light source appears to be a small light source. And the reason I believe that it might be a small light source is if you look at the light fall off from the top of the subject's head to the knee, you would see that it have a rapid fall off. So my suggestion is because you have such a small light source and is unable to light the entire subject, instead of trying to get a full body shot, maybe something maybe from the waist up or maybe from the thigh up, and that would have been a better shot and I would have never noticed the, the light fall off issue. So now let's move on to posing. There's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about with respect to posing, which I believe may help enhance this pose just a little bit more. The first thing would be the elbow and the subject's knee. Generally, you don't want to have those two things facing the camera. You want to have it face away from the camera. And the reason for that has to do with layers. So the first layer that I as the viewer am seeing would be this person's elbow and their knee. That will be the first thing that I connect to as the viewer. And then after that, I connect with the person's face. So unless that was the intent for the person, for the viewers to view the elbow first and then the face, then you got it. But if that wasn't your intent, my suggestion would have been to just have those things not face the camera. So now let's talk about another thing with respect to the posing. Her bum. Her bum is solidly pressed against the wall. Now for a female, you don't want to flatten out a female's bum. What you want to do is retain that shape. So my suggestion would be, instead of having her pressed against that wall, I would have her just slightly touch the wall and it would have retained that shape that it needed to. So one more thing with respect to the posing is her right leg. Her right leg, you will notice that her knee is locked. Generally, when you have a locked joint like that, it projects power, strength, etc. But when it comes to female, you, you want to project a little bit more elegance. Unless that's what you're going for, you know, power, strength, blah, blah, blah. But if you're going for a little bit more elegance, which is what I suspect in this image based on how she's dressed, I would suggest just bending her right knee just a little bit to give that hourglass figure. Now, let's move on to the last section, which is composition. From a compositional perspective, the image creator did a great job with utilizing leading lines into the subject. So from that perspective, awesome job. Great job there, um, Ivan. So another thing with respect to the composition is the bridge directly behind the subject and the line that's leading towards the subject's head and just cutting it off just a little bit. I'm not really sure how I feel about that line going into her head, but the fact that I'm mentioning it leads me to believe that it's a little bit distracting. So if I was shooting this image, I would have tried to eliminate that line from my frame so that it wouldn't go into the subject's head. So one way to correct this problem would have been to move my camera position to camera right just a little bit more. And that would have included more of the wall and less of that bridge. And it also would have correct the second problem, which is that highlight in the background. It would have eliminated that highlight because all you would see would have been the wall and the subject. So that would have been my suggestion there. But you guys let me know what you think about that uh, line in the background, if it's you know distracting or not. I'm a little bit on the fence on that one. So I would love to hear your feedback below. So now let's jump into the rating of this image. Lighting. From a lighting perspective, I give this image a two. From a posing perspective, I gave this image a two. 
And lastly, from a compositional perspective, I give this image a two. Overall, this image received a rating of two. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ivan, I hope you got a lot of information from it. If you want to submit your image to be critiqued, please join our Facebook group. It's called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. And in that group, I created a specific thread where you could submit your images to be critiqued. If you guys enjoyed this video and you got some information from it, please hit that thumbs up button. Please share this video with your friends and family. And please put some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you agreed with some of my suggestions or if you have some helpful suggestions of your own in addition to what I already said. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. So please, please drop those comments down below. This is a learning experience. My goal here is to help the image creator and also hopefully help you guys in the process. So just as a reminder, these video critiques are published every Monday. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every Monday when these videos are released. Also, we have tons of full length photography videos on this channel about posing, lighting, composition. So subscribe if you want to see more. So that's it guys. I'll see you next Monday.